Uh, welcome, uh, Astrenda. Uh, Dr. Astrenda Suryono is a, a, a glaucoma staff at the uh, Department of Tomology, University uh, Indonesia, and also Chipto Mag Magun Kusumo Hospital in Jakarta. And uh, she did her glaucoma fellowship in both in the NUH and also in Morfields. And uh, presently, she's the Re regional secretary for Indonesia to the Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology. Uh, she will be talking to us on managing hypotony post uh, tube surgery. Uh, Over to you, you Asprenda. Thank you, Dr. Fang, for the kind introduction. And I'd like also to thank the AIOS and the APGS for inviting me in this uh, meeting. So my talk today will be about hypotony uh, in post-tube surgery. So as a definition, uh, hi ocular hypotony is normally an intraocular pressure that is three standard deviation below normal or an IOP low enough to cause visual impairment. And the manifestation can include uh, maculopathy, corneal edema, astigmatism, corneal effusion, and or accelerated cataract formation. The incidence uh, is quite varied, especially in filtering glaucoma surgery, but in uh, glaucoma drainage device, some, some studies, for instance, the uh, Indian study um, studying the AIDI, uh, the number of hypotony is probably 7% 7, 7 in adult and 6% in pediatric groups, whereas in the AGV is slightly lower because it's a probably it's a valved uh, tube it's around three and it's uh, slightly higher in the bar felt uh, um, tube at about 16.5 and the uh, two most commonly used drainage implants uh, probably in the world uh, so far is the Ahmed uh, tube and bar felt implant and the valveless device such as the bar felt are most more reliable to cause hypotony and require temporary tube ligature to control IOP until the plate is, uh, uh, vib uh, is encapsulated or has some fibrous tissue. Now I'd like to talk about two types of hypotonia. Probably the early types of hypotonia uh, are due to early leak from the tube entry, excessive flow through the valve device in, in uh, result of over priming and incomplete tube ligation in the non-valve uh, type of tube. And also severe inflammation uh, may cause uh, uh, hypo production of uh, aqueous. And this probably we can prevent by cautious tube priming or using smaller needle to uh, make the tube entry. And we can also insert some viscoelastics such as the sodium hyaluronate and intra uh, camerally and the use of steroids to help the severe inflammation. But unfortunately, sometimes there are the persistent or late or chronic type of hypotonia. And probably some populations are more prone to these types of resistant or chronic hypotonia, in, uh, especially in probably aging cases or uh, ciliary body dysfunctions. The prevention, uh, if we know that we are operating probably on these uh, more susceptible uh, individuals, we might want to use smaller surface area for the tube and we do permanent ligation. And postoperatively, if we find any hypotonia, we might want to uh, check, uh, we, we might have want to uh, do some test, whether there's leak and uh, we can do a CIDLS test or we can see the uh, tube, uh, sorry, the, the fluid flow uh, on the posterior side with ultrasound by microscopy. Uh, management has been described in, 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 in recent studies, which includes watchful waiting or injection of uh, OVDs in, in, intercamerally. And also some surgical options are described, such as the ligation of the tube, uh, intraluminal stents, and probably removal some parts or maybe uh, all of the, uh, the plates. Uh, so the up internal tube ligation is described by Fergados. This technique is quite meticulous, but uh, may work for hypotony in cases where we uh, need to uh, ligate further and, and reduce the uh, flow in the, in, the, in the plate. So this uh, technique describes a two ligation using 9O protein in two different locations. Uh, the ones that are uh, anterior and posterior in the intracameral part of the tube. This procedure aims to reduce intraluminal diameter of the tube without total tube occlusion. And uh, the result is, uh, in the two years result, uh, it's, it's a result, result do a resolution for the hypotony with no significant rebound IOP rise in uh, most of the cases. Although there is some concerning complication, including the inferior displacement, 
displacement of the intraluminal stents may irritate the corneal endothelium and cause corneal decompensation. Another uh, technique described to uh, resolve a uh, hypotony is probably to put a bent intraluminal stent. Uh, this uh, procedure is described uh, when two suture threads were bent to the angle of 30 to 50 degrees and inserted them into the drainage implant to increase the IOP. It uh, provides larger tube occlusion uh, than tube ligation uh, and it doesn't affect the tube curvature. Uh, another procedure that you might want to consider is the, the making plate smaller. Uh, for instance, in this study, uh, it's uh, excising the uh, bow valve wings and suture ligation of the tube. This may be effective in achieving rapid reversal of hypotony while providing flex flexibility in post-operative IOP management and reducing the size or surface area of the scleral explant and therefore the surface area of the surrounding fibrous capsule at the time of surgery may help preventing the recurrence of hypotony following the ligature release. I'd like to uh, share with you some case illustration and this is a 25 year old lady. She complains of blurry vision four months prior to coming to the office and she complains of decreased visual equity especially on the left eye and she described it like peeking through a keyhole. There was no um, past history uh, of any other uh, conditions and um, she came already with some medications uh, astazolamide orally and some uh, uh, two types of um, glaucoma eye drops. Um, her visual equity uh, upon first presentation was still 6-6 six, six on both eyes with maximum medis medication and controlled IUP with quite an advanced uh, cup to disc ratio. This is her first OCT examination showed uh, thinning in both eyes, but the visual, equi uh, the visual field was especially uh, severe, uh, effect severely affected on the left eye and the right eye has some degrees of visual field uh, depression. That, th that time, the patient was uh, diagnosed as a juvenile glaucoma, and um, we initially uh, had a plan for trabeculectomy for both eyes. Uh, and then six months post-op, though, uh, she complained of decreased vision, and as expected, the pressure has risen, uh, and we have to put her on medic maximum medication to, to control her IOP. So we... Uh, put her on uh, medication for about a year, and then she complains uh, furthermore about worsening for both, worsening vision for both eyes. And um, at some point, she had a range of 18 to 25 millimeter mercury for the right eye, which is the best eye, and then left eye was uh, well controlled with uh, glaucoma medications. But uh, because the right eye is the good eye, we want to lower the pressure. So we set the target lower and we plan to do an implant. Uh, at this point, we decided to do a Firna implant, which is a non-valved uh, GDD uh, on the right eye. So uh, during her post-operative period, uh, th the, th the first three months, she has a quite a nice IOP, well-controlled. Sometimes we need to add one drop or two drops, but still managed to be controlled. But strangely, on the fourth month after the surgery, the pressure dropped into uh, four. So um, we decided to give her some steroids treatment, including uh, topical and oral. And we did some examination that, that uh, exclude any choroidal effusions or any choroidal detachment. Um, so this is the picture of her macula. We can see that there's a, a severe uh, folds in, around the macula and resulting in maculopathy hypotony. And um, a visual equity dropped to 620 uncorrected uh, on the right eye and pressure was ranging between four to eight. We consulted uh, the retinal division for any um, treatment that they might uh, suggest to us, but they decided to uh, do a conservative treatment and just watch while giving uh, the steroid treatments. Probably because the, uh, this is the best eye, so they were very uh, careful on uh, deciding to do any, any further surgical intervention. So OCT also showed some uh, condition, uh, the maculopathy condition with uh, folds and some uh, elevated thickness. Uh, thankfully, after one and a half months of uh, aggressive steroid treatments, the visual equity improved and this is her latest, uh, her last um, macular picture uh, showing still some folds but not that severely 
uh, not as severe as our first picture. And the OCT has shown some uh, great improvements as well. But unfortunately, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this better condition is uh, at the price of uh, eye pressure rising. So pressure at, the, at this point was 29, and we have to give her uh, medications as well, uh, to control it. Um, so yeah, as a take home message, hypotonic is a difficult and challenging situation, maybe traumatic also for the surgeon and may result in devastating visual prognosis for the patient. Management is timely and must be carefully considered. Surgical options may be needed and requires meticulous technique. So it is important to consider safety and efficacy for surgical options. And um, maybe um, learning from uh, experiences, sometimes, uh, Watchful waiting may have a place and outcome also might be good, uh, such as in this patient. So with that, I thank you and uh, I will take questions if there's any. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Astrenda. Um, 